Hello and welcome to the French Quick Start Guide. Today we're going to be looking at one or two lines from every chapter and give you a, a good starter um, for if you're interested in playing the, the French or if you're interested in buying the course. Um, this could be a good kind of intro um, so you can get started with playing it and then get a better understanding as you go through the course. Um, do you have anything to add, Lucas? Yeah, uh, as the name already implies, we built a, a French Raptor to be a fighting Raptor for Black. And yeah, when you look at uh, the different lines, you will see that we, we did, uh, went for a lot of imbalances right of the opening. So this course is meant to be uh, yeah, a fighting Raptor to uh, play for the win right from the start. Yeah, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so after E4, E6, this is obviously the French. This is the main, um, I mean, starting point, really. But from here, d4 happens almost all the time. So after we play d5, this is the idea of the French. There's going to be a lot of branching points here. There's knight d2, knight c3, e5, e takes d5. Um, a lot of different ways and, and chapters that we have here. So first, we're going to start with the advanced. Uh, this is what a lot of players on the club level play. Um, but it's actually not that scary. Uh, after e5, we feel like black has a really good uh, initiative, really, to, to fight back in the center. So we start with c5. Um, you know, right away, we are putting pressure on this pawn. And if white does something like knight f3, we would be able to take this pawn, and then e5 would become very weak. Um, so for example, like we put that on the board. Now this e5 pawn is very weak because it doesn't have anything supporting it, and we can put a lot of pressure on it. We can bring our knights here, maybe our, our knight here, but that e5 pawn is going to be a target. So right away we're chipping at the center, and white should play a move like c3. Yeah, with move c3 they are kind of solidifying the pawn chain, and should we take, then they are just going to take back, and yeah, taking early on is not such a good idea because we want to add a lot of pressure onto the, onto the, the pawn first before we kind of like changing its structure. So after we play c3, c3, they move knight c6 to add another attacker to the pawn. And here normally, uh, white plays to move knight f3. Should they play something like f4, they are really just weakening the squares around the king. And therefore, the, the move knight f3 is what most people play. And, here, black has a lot of different options like queen b6 or wish b7, but these will lead to some heavy theoretical battles. And what in a lot of lines can just take a pawn, and it's hard for black to get a comfortable position out of the opening. So we are opting for the move knight g7. This move tries to go uh, uh, to a uh, knight f5 to add another attacker to the center. And compared to the main lines, it's actually avoiding the modern military gambit that's quite become quite scary lately. So the knights heading to f5, and what, uh, what's happened next? So here, uh, we're going to show you a line where white plays bishop to d3. This is uh, kind of the idea of the military is to sacrifice this pawn or kind of block your own queen from defending it. So a lot of times we get this position with the queen on b6 and the knight back on g8. And then black could take, take, but they couldn't take again because there's a trick. Uh, so we just show that really quick. Uh, it's just like this, take, take. After all the takes on d4, there's bishop e5 check. A discovered attack on the queen and white would be winning. But a lot of times white is going to give up that pawn anyway um, and it's still very dangerous. So um, again that's why we go knight g7. So after bishop d3 um, here we're actually going to release the tension a little bit in the center. We play cd and then white recaptures and again we want to attack the base of the pawn chain. So now we've made d4 the base. Before, it was all the way back at b2. That's kind of hard to get because it's so far in our opponent's territory. But we can get this We can get this d4 pawn. We can, we can attack that. So here, we start with knight's f5 to 
put pressure on that pawn right away. And it is important to note that here, um, we actually are threatening to take this versus a normal milner berry line. Like, for example, if castles uh, takes on d4 is actually quite possible because this knight on d4 covers the b5 square. So bishop b5 check, we could just take. So this trick no longer works. And then if queen a4 check, we can just retreat the knight back to c6. And that is a pretty clean pawn. Um, but regardless, after um, after knight to f5, white should and, and most often takes on f5. So what happens after this? Yeah. Now that you've taken our knight, we, of course, have to take back. But we achieved uh, that white gave uh, up their strong nice square bishop on d3. Often uh, the bishop on d3 can become a quite annoying piece as it's constantly pointing towards our king side. But with this trade, uh, we got rid of white's bishop pair and yeah, gotten the only light square bishop on the board. So we have constant control over the light squares. After we've taken back white normally castles, and now we have the option to put the bishop on e6. In a lot of French lines, the light square bishop is quite a passive piece, and we have to activate it. As, yeah, uh, and it was like that. But here we've uh, already gotten the bishop to e6, so it's active and holding everything together. Yeah. White develops, and we develop too. And but for, at first, it looks like, yeah, black's having a damage pawn structure and white's getting quite some harmonious development. But we can make use of the fact that we have to double f pawns to build up a little attack on the king side. So uh, white often tries to advance on the queen side with b4, b5. But now we can play move g5. Yeah. White has committed the king uh, to the king side early on. So we are lashing forward and making use of the fact that these double f pawns are quite useful to start a pawn storm. Yeah. When they play the move b4, we continue with the move f4. Please, uh, please note that the move g4, it looks like a nice aggressive move, but yeah, white can just retreat and now we've weakened all the dark squares on the king side. So we want to go uh, f4 instead to like restrict White stacks with bishop and build up a nice space advantage on the, on the king side. Yeah. White uh, tries to maneuver the pieces around to queen side. Yeah, and we activate another piece with rook c8. We are already threatening some knight discoveries to win the pawn. So they have to defend with a passive move like bishop b7, uh, sorry, bishop b2. Yeah. And now, uh, what what what's going to happen next? Here's where King is kind of uh, in a weird situation because we move the pawns in front of our King on the King side uh, with G five and F four, but uh, we also move the Rook on the Queen side, so we can't really castle Queen side either. So here, um, what we're actually going to end up doing with our King is tucking it in the corner here on h8. If we can bring that king to h8, so we're going to start by castling. Um, but if we bring this king to h8, it's going to be actually quite safe, and it's going to allow us to continue our attack on the king side. So now we could potentially bring our rook here, slide our queen over, bring our queen in. There's all sorts of uh, ways we can continue this attack uh, while also maintaining a pretty safe king. So anyway, I, from here, I can play knight d3, they're trying to hop into c5, so we're just going to stop that idea, play b6. And here, just like I mentioned, this idea of playing like rook g8, queen f8, queen f6, maybe rerouting this bishop to a better square, we've got a lot of nice uh, improving ideas, and they can often lead to a, a pretty devastating attack. If you'd ever play f3 at the right moment, that's going to be very, very nasty. Um, or a potential g4 and then g3. There's all sorts of pawn breaks here that can help us open up that king. So here, we believe black has a very, very nice practical advantage because we're attacking white, and it's not sh it's not very clear what white is doing. Um, we have a clear plan, right? We're going to 
bring our pieces to the king side and, and try to get one of these pawn breaks in. And white's just kind of moving their pieces around. They don't really know um, what they're going to be doing exactly. So just a very easy, uh, simple position. Not super simple, but like the plans are a lot simpler for us than it is for our opponents. So we should be looking forward to having this position with black. Yeah. The second chapter of our course, we are looking at uh, a lot of different sidelines that can arise from the advanced variation, where white does not go for the typical setup with pawn c3 and knight in f3. So when you go again to the base position of the advance, after knight f6, for example, uh, yeah, they can play with who's like f4. Uh, and here we have your option of just going for a normal maneuver of, for example, knight f6, knight f5, or knight f7, knight f5. And that's covered in the, uh, in the main course in depth. But there's also like this quite tricky move, queen g4. And I want to mention it, uh, quick starter guide as this can a lot can throw a lot of uh, players off that are starting out with the French. As White's basically saying, yeah, they can take on d4 and grab a pawn. But because the queen is constantly eyeing the uh, g7 pawn, it's hard for black to develop the king side. But in fact, this queen is just misplaced uh, on g4 in the long run and can become a target later on. So when white continues to develop it with knight f3, play knight c6 to defend the pawn. And then again, they continue to develop and don't take the pawn back and just play for activity. But now we can make use of the fact that the queen's on g4 and they move h5 to attack it. It looks risky to like, push the h pawn in the early stage of the game, but it's completely reasonable and if we play correctly, we can get a nice edge out of the opening. So the queen normally tries to either g7 pawn again, but we play h4 to dislodge it. And when the queen retreats, we play move knight h6 with tempo. Yeah. So taking here is, would just lead to a trade where black can win another pawn. So they have to react uh, to knight a6 by actually taking the knight. But after that, we just take back. We've won the bishop pair. And yeah, black's just having a nice position. And white's pieces look active, but they aren't really coordinated that well. So how, how does this may I continue from here? Yeah, so from here, um, after f6, h6, I mean, white could just castle, do something like this. Um, but our plan is going to be to develop our pieces and castle queen side, because our king is going to be much, much safer on the queen side than it will be on the king side, because all of white's pieces are on the king side. Like, they're pointing towards a king on the king side, but there's going to be no king on the king side if we castle queen side. So that's kind of our plan here. Um, so we're going to play bishop d7, and then after knight to d2, Queen c7, just like I mentioned, this plan, we're attacking e5, and we're also preparing to castle long. And then after white defends this pawn on e5, we just castle long. And here, um, this e5 pawn is very, very weak. And I'm very much looking forward to playing this f6 move. Because once we play f6, it's like the floodgates open. Everything falls apart for white. So... Um, this is kind of where we end the line, but if we went a little bit further, f6 here, and then if something like this happened, we could even look to play e5, e4, or we could just take, but we're going to have massive, massive domination in the center with all of our pawns here, and we're going to be able to reroute this bishop to d6, where it's going to be fantastic. Our position is just incredible here. So um, a well-timed f6 is going to be very strong, but... The idea of castling along is the idea we really want to uh, to to give to you. Yeah, and another uh, line that's played quite often on club level is the exchange variation. So, uh, 
white players who go for this normally just want to avoid any theoretical battles out of the opening. They fear that, yeah, that might get a lot of pressure on the center, like we've already seen. So you just take. And what you've got is just a completely symmetrical pawn structure with the e pawns already traded off. And if you want to fight uh, for anything right from start, we need to create imbalances. Like, of course, Black King just copy all the moves that uh, White's doing and I have three and I have six, bishop out, bishop out, castle, castle. And this will be just completely equal and is of course playable, but we're opting for some balances uh, to try to fight for the win. So when White develops, we start by putting the bishop onto the uh, d6, so we are the king side. And when they develop, we don't go in uh, knight f3, but well, knight e7 to keep the option of, of going f6 and g5. And when we castle, we develop the other knight. Yeah, supporting the center with c3, and we play bishop g4. Killing the knight and yeah, exerting some pressure on this, the center. And a lot of white players just try to get a dark square bishop active as it cannot go to f4. And on uh, e3, it would be quite passive. So they just try to play move, uh, bishop g5. But in fact, this uh, allows us to go pawn f6 with tempo uh, to kick the bishop away. And after the bishop retreats, we play move queen e7, preparing to go for a long castling and then trying to pawn storm. And yeah, black has a clean uh, plan to attack and white is kind of, uh, has kind of developed their minor pieces, but it's not really equipped to start a big counter attack as, as soon as we go at g5, h5, we are attacking and white's forced to defend because kind of players b4, a4, and a5 is quite slow. So they develop and we cast along. And we're making use of the fact that we've already gotten in the three tempos f6. So what does happen uh, in time most of the time? Um so here, I mean from a position like this, I've I've won like so many games like this because the plans are just so simple. Like you just launch your pawns down the board and maybe get this one to h3 and there's just, your pieces work very harmoniously here. Um, but one of the ways that white can try to counterattack is by playing b4, trying to get their own attack um, because it's opposite sides castling. But we are just going to be much faster and, and in a much better shape to attack. So we start by actually playing <clears throat> knight to f5. So this plan with g5 and h5 is possible, but knight to f5 is actually... A little bit better because we're threatening knight six h4 because this knight is pinned. So knight six h4 is a pretty big threat, and essentially we're going to win the bishop here. White has to either take this way where we're going to be able to take back the queen and still have really nice pressure, or they're going to have to play bishop g3, and then after bishop g3, we'll see what happens. Um, instead of playing knight to g3, which would win the bishop pair, here we actually have a really, really nice idea. We play bishop to g3. So right away, f to g3 is just not possible. f to g3, we play knight e3, we fork, and we win material. And then if h takes g3, now we've created a hook. Now this attack becomes so much easier because all we have to do is bring this pawn to h4, and then everything explodes on the king side. Everything opens up tremendously, like very, very easily. So we just play h5 here, and we're just going to push g5, h4 again, open things up. And I, I really love our attack here. Our queen swing to h7 is also an idea that might be nice to remember. Because if we open up this h file, um, we want to get our queen and rook doubled on the h file to try to give checkmate. And white's attack is always just too slow. Um, they, they just don't have any pieces to attack us with. Um, so they can, they can play b5 and stuff, but 
it's just again it's just going to be way too slow so uh we're, we're going to be in very good shape here yeah yeah that's uh for the exchange variation and that line white can play is to don't do anything with the pawns at all but a set play move knight c3 to defend the pawn yeah. here black has a lot of options like bishop before or taking but in the course we're opting for the move knight of six that's the so-called classical variation of the french and we're basically yeah putting more pressure onto white's e4 pawn and forcing white to commit to a certain structure there are different uh, approaches by whites like the immediate e5 or bishop g5 first here in this quick start guide we are looking at two lines uh, with e5 and one line with the bishop g5 but e5 is just the most played move after that we retreat the knight back to d7 like putting it here looks active but this is just a ruined structure and we cannot really guard this pawn in the long run and that's just bad so we are placing it on d7 where it puts some nice pressure onto the e5 pawn White uh, normally goes for to move f4 to solidify the center. Uh, because they have a, a knight in c3, they cannot uh, restructure with move pawn to c3, so they have to guard the center with the other pawn. And we continue with the normal French idea of playing c5. That's often uh, a common theme in a lot of French structures. And should you ever forget your concrete lines, uh, it's good to just remember the basic idea that you want to play c5 most of the time to uh, attack white center and fold up as you move knight c6 to put more pressure. So they defend us uh, the d pawn again. We play knight c6 and they develop uh, the bishop to defend it again. So should it uh, play the move like bishop b2? That's already like, a big mistake. Because we can take, take, and win a pawn and make use of the fact that this diagonal got weakened and now black's just up a clean pawn. So white has to be quite cautious here and defend the pawn, especially b3. From this point on, black has a lot of moves like taking followed by bishop c5, or taking followed by queen b6, or near queen b6, or a6, or a6, b5. But of course, we're opting for the move bishop b7. It's just a flexible developing move. We're preparing to castle, and we're only committing to a certain structure once white shows what they are going to do. So the main continuation here is queen to d2. White also just keeps the structure flexible and maybe opts to castle long. But yeah, black can just castle and has a very solid position. In this position, white uh, already can go wrong. What's the, uh, the move that ha happens uh, most of the time in club table? Yeah, here white plays castles a lot. So um, the way to remember uh, when we want to castle is we want to castle before white can castle. So white, um, we castle and now white <clears throat> can castle, but it's actually a huge mistake because after castles, we are very, very well equipped to attack. So after castles, we can just start by playing c4. And what this does is it stops the bishop from coming to d3, and it closes down the position. So right away, our plan is going to be to play b5 and just try to open things up. Again, opposite size castling. We've seen this before uh, multiple times already. And it, it leads to very dynamic attacking chess. This is what we want. So um, after this, white tries to start rolling with a move like g4. Um, but we play b5 even though it's unprotected because we are willing to sacrifice this pawn because more important than material here is, is efficiency. It's, it's quickness. If we can attack first, that's going to be way more valuable than a pawn in the long run. So after knight takes b5, we play rook to d8, taking advantage of this newly open b file. And after rook to b8, 
this knight can hop into d6, which is kind of scary. Um, it is a nice square for the knight, but we're just going to kill it right away. Um, now there is no more beautiful knight on d6. And after this, we can continue our attack. So here, we want to show a really fun line where we play knight to b4. So we're attacking this pawn on a2 and potentially preparing c3. And now here, white often plays a3 just to try to kick this knight out of the way. But this is a very, very bad move. Because what can we do here, Lucas? Yeah, we can make use of the fact that white's king and queen are kind of uh, badly coordinated and we have all this activity along the b-file, so we can play the move c3. It looks kind of weird to just give up a pawn, but white cannot take it. If we take it with the queen, it's just a fork, and we're completely winning. And if we take the pawn, we're playing knight a2 anyway, and now it's a beautiful checkmate. So, yeah, black's basically completely winning at this point, and should they move the queen, we can still check and, yeah, go for a big attack, and we're mating in a couple of moves. So, white already is completely lost in this position. This again shows the potential that Black's having it with the half open B file and all the active pieces, while White hasn't really developed their king side at all. And this attack was uh, g4, g5, and f5 looks scary, but Black's just much faster. Yeah. Um, yeah, our attack is just much quicker. And again, that's that's because we can play this b5 move. So that's, that's an, a key memory marker. Uh, if we can play b5 and attack first, we're going to be in really good shape. So let's go back um, to after knight c3, knight f6. We are looking at e5, which is the classical. And then after we retreat our knight here um, with knight f to d7, we just looked at f4. Now we're going to look at knight c to e2. This is a weird looking move, um, but it's it's more common uh, at stronger levels. And the idea is white wants to support their pawns in the center with pawns. They want to be able to recapture on d4 with the pawn. So they're clearing that d4 square um, to be ready to take with the pawn. Um, they're, sorry, clearing that c3 square for so a pawn can, can go there and recapture. So after knight c2, we continue with our plan. c5, c3, knight c6, this is all standard, just trying to attack the center. And white tries to play knight to f3. And here, we're just going to stick with our, our normal setup. We play bishop to e7. We just saw this um, in the last line, and it led to a pretty devastating attack. So it's a, it's a pretty nice setup. And after this, white's going to play g3. So this is a weird looking move, but how are we going to proceed from here? Yeah, White's well, basically saying, okay, because there's an knight on e2, I cannot really develop the light square bishop uh, on this diagonal, so I need to get it out uh, on the other side, so they are trying to fear and cattle the light square bishop. But we can just make use of the fact that uh, this bishop will leave the eye of the uh, to the queen side and play the move b5. Just break on with b4 and then put our nice square bishop on a6. So they play bishop g2, we play b4. Should white take here, we can take in the center. Then should white take here, we can take here and basically every liquidation of center is advantageous for black. So white will probably hold the tension by just going for castle. And now we have a chance to put this bishop on a6 where it's quite active and ping the knight. Oftentimes, uh, in these kind of sidelines, you see that when, uh, when the bishop gets to a6, black already uh, achieved quite a lot because that's our worst minor piece. And when you can get it out on this log diagonal, we have, we have solved our biggest issue. So. As the knight's pinned, they might normally just unpin with rookie one. And now we can 
take ones and create a long-term target on C3 and continue with canceling. Black has a very solid position with nice central control and active pieces. We can try to double up on the B file and maybe break with the um, pawn F6 later on. And this position is objectively equal, but we believe Black just has much easier players. White isn't really that well coordinated to start any, any kingside attack. So they have to more or less react to our positional threats on the queen side and the center. And yeah, we get a lot of nice play. Yeah, anytime we get that bishop uh, on a square like a6, we are in very, very good shape. Because that, that's kind of our, our problem piece. That's the, the French bishop is this bishop on c8 blocked behind the, the pawns in the center. But here it's, it's found a very active square. And uh, whenever we can do that, we're going to be very, very happy. So um, <clears throat> we just looked at uh, knight cd2. So if we go back um, to this position, we want to look at bishop g5. So instead of uh, relieving that tension in the center, White is creating a pin on our knights, so if takes, uh, they're planning on taking back. And this is exactly uh, what, what's going to happen. So we're going to take on e4, and white recaptures with knight takes e4, and we just play bishop to e7. So we break this pin, and now um, we, are, we are threatening knight takes e4. So again, we're kind of forcing um, the issue. Most of this is pretty forced uh, if white doesn't, you know, Follow this line, then they'll probably just be down a pawn or something. So after bishop e7, um, here, this looks a little funny, but instead of playing knight takes f6, white should play bishop takes f6. Um, and we'll, we'll try to explain that a little bit later. But after knight takes f6, we just have a very, you know, very nice position. We're going to be in good shape, and we really just don't have any weaknesses. Uh, so we should be able to just take with a bishop and, and develop accordingly after that. Um, but when they take with a bishop, this is the most common move. This is the kind of uh, critical line. Here, we can play this really funny move, g takes f6. So I really like this move because, again, it um, imbalances things very, very quickly. Um, right away, we have the two bishops. White doesn't. We have these doubled f pawns. White doesn't. And we're ready to potentially play f5. So these doubled f pawns look kind of weak, but I think they're a very strong asset and, and can really be very nice to attack the center. Um, so after a move like knight to f3, we start with f5 immediately. And once black, or sorry, once white retreats, uh, how are we going to finish our development here? Yeah, white has. Uh some different retreat moves like knight g3 or knight e2, but they are more or less harmless and allow us to just go with a typical c5 break. But the, uh, the move knight c3 uh, kind of defends against uh, c5 as why can play d5 and that would be uh, kind of annoying and why can break up our structure and then this Double pawns can become quite weak. So this line, we cannot go uh, for c5 right away. But instead, we can play a6. That's a, a nice way to get this kind of blocked nice square bishop out as after white tries to develop their bishop with a move like g3. We can play b5 and put this bishop on b7. So white fin cattles, and it looks like we are kind of weakened on, we've weakened ourselves on this long diagonal, but we're just in time to play bishop with uh, b7 and kind of oppose white's bishop. And after white castled, we castle too, and yeah, we've reached a really nice position. We've gotten this for active bishop. We have more space on the queen side. And uh, what's really important, uh, despite we have this like doubled f pawns and missing g pawn, uh, we have to dark square bishop to cover all this, those 
weak to dark squares and our king is perfectly safe even though it looks kind of weird uh, at first glance and we can actually make use of the fact that we have this half of g5 maybe playing king h8 rook g8 later on so what, what, what the white's uh, going to do here is maybe play knight e5 to get rid of this tension between the bishops so we can just trade once and play the move b4 to gain more space on the queen side and secure this d5 square. So after like, the knight moves, we can give this check and our queen is nicely centralized. And yeah, with the dark side bishop, we can try to play for the win. And white doesn't really have that much coordination, while black is just an easy plan of advancing on the queen side and getting this knight to f6 and maybe to to e4 later on. Or if white just weakens himself more by playing like f3, we can also just think about trying to create an attack on the king's side after we've finished development. So this position is just pretty comfortable for black and yeah, white has to try to survive uh, all of our activity. Yeah, remembering this b4 move is, is kind of a key, because once you secure this d5 square, this d4 pawn becomes a very big target. We can play rook d8, we can play c5, um, because if, if white ever takes, well, then they lose that knight. So uh, white's position becomes very dangerous, and we can gain a very quick initiative just by attacking the center and attacking uh, white's d4 pawn, particularly. So. This is already a, a pretty dangerous position for white, where white has to be very careful. Um, so this this is something, again, we should probably be looking forward to. Um, but let's go back. Instead of bishop g5, we're going to go all the way back here and look at knight to d2. So this is called the tarash. And the idea of this is to avoid um, bishop b4. Because if we play bishop b4 now, then c3 um, just kind of kicks that, that bishop out, and we just wasted time. So, um, <laughs> you know, normally we don't play bishop b4 in, in the classical, but that is an option. It's called the winnower. Um, but anyway, after knight d2, um, here we're going to recommend this move bishop to e7. So here, I mean, already in this position, black has... Crazy, crazy, uh, like myriad of of options. Like there's there's so many different moves here that, that black can play, but we prefer bishop e7 because we want to be flexible. So you could play knight f6 and, and get a position where it starts to close off really quickly, or you could play c5 and open things up very quickly. But we want to have the option of adapting to whatever white does and and get whatever position. Uh, that the position essentially tells us to. So um, here, again, we're, we're being patient and we're waiting to see what white does because that'll kind of give us a hint as to what we should be doing um, in response. So after um, after bishop d7, what does white play here? Yeah, white has uh, different moves like knight g3 or bishop d3. And kind of as a memory marker uh, for how to play these positions, uh, whenever uh, white blocks the f pawn with the knight, we can play knight f6 and go for the more closed structures. And when they play bishop d3 to stay solid, we're opting for c5 and go into the more open systems. Uh, the reason for this is that uh, should we tr uh, try to go for close setups after? Uh, bishop d3, white has the option of kind of like building the ideal uh, yeah, setup with like pawns in f4 and c3. And compared to the classical where they have a pawn in f4, but uh, instead of knight on c3, uh, white center is much more solid, much more compact, and it's a lot harder for black to break it down. So against bishop d3, we play to move c5 to open things up. But uh, yeah, 
show some sample lines after knight g3, play knight f6. And now white closed uh, the center. We again retreat to knight g7, bishop g3, c5, c3, knight c6. And note that white uh, was able to restruct, uh, restructure the center with pawn c3, but they don't have like the pawn f4 to get like the massive control. And we've kind of built up the same setup as we've gotten in the classical. So after, after castles, he plays a nice move a5. It looks kind of weird at first, but uh, the idea is uh, just to gain space on the queen side and prevent any b4 breaks from white. So how does play continue from here? Here, uh, white often plays rook to e1, which is developing their rook. And we're going to start by taking on d4. Again, when we do this, we do this to bring the base of the pawn chain from b2 to d4, because d4 is a lot easier to attack. Um, so after cd, cd, we're going to play queen to b6. And now we kind of see why a5 was a pretty useful addition. After a5, um, what this does is now if knight b3, we can kick that knight out right away with a4. Um, so it's very difficult for white to actually hold on to this. And here the most common move is just knight to f1, which is a, a pretty clear mistake because this is just a free pawn. You can just take on d4. And after white takes and we take back, they can try to play a move like bishop e3, but this is just, it's just nothing. Um, their their whole center is falling apart. So even though, you know, we are getting a little greedy with our king in the center and, you know, a little bit behind in development, we have this pawn chain here to shield our king. So we can't really get in any serious trouble. Um, but here, white has this move, bishop c5, which can be annoying because uh, it essentially tries to take on e7 and, and stick our king in the center. Um, and, you know, we're, we're okay with that because we have these pawns here. We're going to keep eating the pawns that white's giving us. And after queen takes b2, white can take and, and they can try to continue attacking us with queen g4, but queen g4 doesn't really do anything. And we wanted to leave you with this, um, this nice little trick um, that, that just completely ends the game, pretty much. Uh, we could play knight to f6 here, just inviting the queen to take on g7. And after queen takes g7, we could play rook g8. And okay, like the queen has to go to h6, but you know, white seems okay. Our king is still in the center. You know, maybe, maybe uh, white still has some attacking chances with their queen. But then we drop the bomb. Queen takes f2, check. And this, again, just ends the game on the spot because, I mean, white has to take because we're going to mate him otherwise. And if white takes, we just play knight g4, check. And we win this queen on h6. And we are up a whopping three pawns here. So that should be more than enough to, to convert from here. Um, so yeah, if, if white gives us pawns, we just take them. And this uh, pawn structure should be enough to shield our king and uh, give us some safety. Yeah. Now let's uh, look at the more open systems in Tarash. So if white does not play knight g3, play, uh, but rather plays bishop g3, you have the option of going c5 to break open the structure. And a lot of white players just try to stick to like a normal reaction and play the move pawn to, pawn to c3 to uh, restructure center. But because White hasn't played uh, e5 yet. We can take on d4, take on e4, and now uh, what happened is white got an isolated d-pawn, and we can just focus our play around attacking this pawn. We cannot take it right away, as again, bishop e5 would just win a queen, but we can just continue to develop our pieces and start with normal play against the IKP. So developing locating a pawn, and then trading down to weaken the pawn further. So knight f6, 
knight f3, knight c6, attacking the pawn. It's still not, uh, not taking as this trick. Uh, it's again possible, but I've castling, castling. Yeah, this pawn is quite weak and we can try to attack it. Why can and defend it tactically again with some bishops with calories. So we want to uh, try to get the best coordination first before uh, ultimately capitalizing on its weakness. So we played knight before, trying to win white strong knight square bishop that allows all this those discovery tricks. So white normal retreats. And now we play knight uh, bd5 to locate the isolated pawn. So I can never advance it to uh, break our coordination and we can try to finish development with like b6, bishop b7, rook c8, and just pile up a lot of pressure onto this pawn and try to win it uh, in the end. So white tries to compensate for this pawn weakness by just trying to play active and building up this battery. And it looks quite dangerous with maybe like taking and some eight threats, but because our knights are defending each other, there's no threat at all. So we just continue with playing b6 and to the white take, just take back and we're defending and can then maybe try to like dislodge the queen. But, uh, so after b6, white tries to get knight active on turn e5, but we just play bishop b7 and we finish our de uh, development of the minor pieces and can just start to trade uh, some of white's pieces to ultimately weaken this pawn. And as soon as uh, uh, some of the minor pieces uh, get traded, uh, white cannot hold this pawn anymore. And sooner or later, uh, black will just win a pawn and convert the end game. And as long as nothing happens on h7, we are totally fine. Yeah. So this is a very nice position where we should have really good chances. Um, so let's go back. Uh, that was kind of Tarash with knight dd2. So now we're going to look at uh, e4, e6. Uh, we, we've covered most of the main lines, so we're going to look at two kind of side lines, and, and that'll be it. So after knight's f3. Um, this is kind of unusual, but it's more common at the club level. And we just play d5. We can pretty much pre-move d5 against anything. Um, and then knight to c3 is, is the two knights. So white brings these two knights into the game. Um, but here we're just going to play knight to f6. Um, and we're just attacking this pawn on e4. Um, we don't have to play d4 or anything to try to punish it. We can just kind of get... A position that that we're comfortable with that we've kind of seen before, um, because after this, we pretty much has to play e5. E takes d5, just brings to, brings it to an exchange. And after e5, this e5 pawn is going to be especially weak because white has white white doesn't have the option of playing f4 or c3 to support their center, um, because they brought their their knights to those squares. So the, their center is going to be very very weak. After knight d7, d4, we strike with c5, a very common idea, and it's just very, very tough. It, white doesn't really have a lot of options. If they just play like bishop e3, we can already just take and just play knight c6, queen c7, um, just put a lot of pressure on these two central squares, and, and white's not really going to be able to hold it very well. Um, so d takes c5 is kind of the critical line, and we're going to play knight c6 here. Again, very comfortable. We want to be patient. We can take on c5, but um, we can also develop with tempo. So developing with tempo is, is preferred, and this pawn is not going anywhere. Um, so white can play bishop f4 now. And here, how are we going to proceed? Yeah, we just proceeding by, first of all, taking our pawn back with the knight, not with the bishop. Uh, even though this bishop is uh, currently undeveloped, we uh, want to place on e7 to get a nice control of uh, the g5 square to prevent anything from 
coming there. So what kind of tries to make up for their you know, weakened central structure by just getting all the mana pieces active? Uh, we can take here, but uh, our knight also is quite active and we want to keep it there for the moment. So we're just developing with bishop 7 And now in uh, white castles, it's a good time to kind of pause and think about the ideas we can also just castle and play it solidly with bishop 7 queen 7 and slow play it. But we can also uh, make use of the fact that white has committed their king yet. And we haven't, so we can play with g5 to gain tempo on the bishop and create an attack on, uh, on our own. So after the bishop retreats, h5, already th uh, threatening h4 to win the bishop. So white has to react uh, to the threat. And now we just continue with bishop g7. Again, our central structure is solid, so uh, we can allow ourselves to not castling yet and set up for non castling and make use of the fact that we've already pushed the pawns to break open a white structure. And white has weakened himself by playing h3. So as soon as we've gotten our pieces uh, into play, the move uh, g4 will just break open white structure and yeah, we're getting a big attack. Uh, one thing to note is that this uh, idea of uh, going for the attack with bishop e7 and g5 does only work uh, if white has a bishop on d3. If white uh, instead puts a bishop on e2 with castles, uh, we just have to slow play it as there are tactical issues where, I'm just short, uh, white can. Yeah, just uh, brought the bishop uh, back like this. And when you go here, you can uh, take the pawn and yeah, just win material. So, and when the bishop is uh, so d3, we can take a d3 in between. And this whole idea of my white does not work. That's just a little note and also covered in the main course more in depth. So, yeah, the two knights is not dangerous whatsoever. And it's kind of just the worst version of the classical. And yeah, black gets nice play and even has a chance to just go for a big attack in the main line. Yeah. So that brings us to the last line that we're going to look at today. Instead of knights f3, um, we're going to look at d3. Um, this is usually how white uh, gets to a king's ending attack. They can do it in some other move orders, but first we're going to start with d5 anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, again, this is our bread and butter. We're very familiar with playing um, this d5 move, so why change it now? Um, and after d5, white plays knight d2, so we can't just take and trade queens to block that uh, file. We play knight f6, attack the center. Knight f3, c5. So we're essentially doing the same thing we would do to start um, to attack the center, except there isn't really a center to attack. So we're just winning the center, I guess. Um, and then g3, knight c6. Again, white's move order, our move order could change. Doesn't really matter. We just want to show you some of the ideas. Um, bishop e2, bishop e7. Don't really want to go to d6, although it seems a little bit more active. White is going to be able to play e5 at some point, and we don't want our bishop on d6 when that happens. Um, so after castles, castles, um, rookie one. So we've kind of reached a, a position where we've just developed our pieces, and you know we don't really have to remember anything. We just get our pieces out to their normal squares. But now um, <clears throat> we looked over a lot of different lines. Uh, for what to recommend here, but we we essentially uh, ended up with the main line, and we we tried to avoid the main line a lot of the course. But with the king's Indian attack, the main line is the most critical. It's the main line for a reason. It is the 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 line that gives black the best winning chances. So that's why we recommended it, and it starts with d five. So we're trying to gain space on the queen side. 
and then white will try to attack on the king side. So we put pressure on the c5 pawn. Knight d7 plays knight to f1. We're also ready to play queen e2 if we ever continue to attack this pawn. So uh, this pawn is never really going to be that weak. Also, bishop f4 is always an option as well. Um, so after knight f1, we just want to keep pressing on the queen side. And then h4, b4, it's just, you know, again, similar to like an opposite sides castling position, just attacking on opposite sides of the board, who's going to who's gonna win? Who's going to strike first? Um, so after bishop f4, a4, a3 is typically an idea to slow down our attack. Otherwise, uh, ideas of playing a3 and c4 would be very, very strong. So a3 is kind of a way for white to try to slow us down. We take on a3 um, and bring our bishop to a6. This is a, a really nice square for a bishop, just like we mentioned earlier. Anytime we can develop the slight square bishop um, to a nice square like a6, we're, we should be very, very happy. Um, so after this, uh, how does the game typically proceed from here? We've, we've kind of developed, finished our development, but what now? Yeah, we've already uh, reached uh, move 14, so we're quite deep into a line, but as the king's attack is normally a system, white will rattle off those moves kind of on autopilot. Uh, this is just what happens most of the time. So white tries to push on with the attack and bring a lot of pieces to uh, king's side and mate us. And it looks scary with all of white's minor pieces coming in, but in fact, our position is just very solid and we're controlling a lot of critical squares and maybe also just play knight f8 to defend later on. So uh, you just have to know that white's attack isn't really dangerous if you really defend correctly. And our attack on the queen side will just break through sooner or later. So white plays knights one, uh, one to h2 to bring the knight in. We play rook b8 and yeah, occupy the b file. And now white plays knight g5 to yeah, just set up queen h5 and mate h7. But just play move h6 and take off the knight. Should the knight like, move back or so, we can continue with breaking on queen side, bring all the pieces in. Uh, but uh, white might actually try to just sacrifice the knights and in order to gain a big attack and instead of retreating knight, you can try to play queen h5. That's kind of like a typical sacrifice uh, Fischer did uh, in the 50s and 60s. And it looks attractive to just sacrifice pieces to crash through with, with the mating attack, but in this situation, just does not work at all. And we grab the free piece. So if we take back, we play with g6 to take the queen away and yeah, get some free room for a king, so queen h4. And now it, uh, white threatens knight g4 and knight h6 to make use of the fact that our king is currently only shielded by uh, basically nothing, uh, except for the rook that's not doing much. So uh, the key move uh, here to completely refute white sacrifices uh, knight to d4. That's important because we want to shift it to f5 to get another a defender in, uh, to the king side. So white plays knight g4, and we play knight f5. They play uh, knight a6 to break through, but we just take it. Should it, yeah, like they can't take with, with the pawn, uh, or else they lose the queen, so they have to take with the queen. And yeah, we just play rook e8, and once we've got uh, bishop f6, uh, bishop to seven, knight of eight. Our king is completely shielded, and yeah, white's pieces aren't doing anything at all. And the upper piece can still break on the green side, and this is completely winning for black. It's the com uh, computer already gives like minus five. So yeah, uh, you just have to know that white attack, white attack might look dangerous, but it's not dangerous at all if we pause for a moment to just get all the defenders to the king side. Yeah. Um, so that is the last line we're going to show you. Um, so 
you know, hopefully um, this has convinced you to uh, check out the course. Um, there's a lot of a lot of fun lines in here, and yeah, if you want to explore more, definitely check it out. And yeah, thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching. See you in the main course.